Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Letter Games, and it is called Root, a game of woodland might and right. It is by Cole Wero, and the art is by Kyle Farron. Uh, Root is basically going to be a game in which you're trying to... Well, it depends on what you're doing. There's four different races or classes, and you're going to be either sustaining different land by the Marquise de Cats, or you're going to be trying to gather more land using these uh, little eerie uh, dynasty guys, which are the little birds. There are the mice, which have their little rabbles that go on throughout the game. And then you've got another more interesting faction that is just a singular unit that moves around the board as well, which I'll go ahead and get into all this stuff. But the idea is, no matter what you play, you're going to be doing something different throughout, throughout each game, and the board has not only a front but also a backside to change the way of play. At the end of the game, you're going to tell it the amount of points which is on the bottom of the board, and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of the game. And you're all just trying to do your own different things, and whoever does the, their own different things the best, while well, combating against other players is going to be the winner. Now, each different play session, depending on the number of players, will determine what types you should be playing for that specific game. And there's a ton of extra stuff that comes in the game. There's cards, there's tokens, the point values, and all the different pieces. All right, well, anyway, that is the idea of the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at Root and I will show you how it plays. So here we have Root, a game of Woodland Might and Right, and it's set up for two players. I went ahead and put the two different character boards along with all the tokens that you're going to be using, that you're going to be taking off of your uh, boards here, as well as placement for all the different cats and these little eerie guys. Each player is also going to be able to use these die for attacking, and uh, there's a deck of cards here that everybody gets three of. Uh, so there's different characters, right? As you see, there's there and there, there are different characters are going to do different things. For instance, since you've also got these uh, these little guys here, these are the, the Woodland Alliance, and then there are the vag there's the Vagabond too. But I'm not going to talk about those that much. I'll talk about in the review, I suppose. Uh, but what's nice and interesting is it has a learn to play walkthrough where you take the two first two turns of each player and you learn how to play the game. And it'll talk about the Marquise, which is the first player in the Eerie, and then the Alliance and the Vagabond, and it tells you how to play, right? And then on the other side, it tells you the turn two of that, and then afterwards you can go ahead and start playing. They comes with two rule books. One is the learning to play rule book. And then you've got the Rules Lawyer rulebook for more in-depth rules on how to play the game. Uh, this is one side of the board, and the other side is kind of a make-it-your-own type of board. And it'll come with these little tokens here, which will basically show you the different uh, locations and the different types of those locations that can be added to the game to change how it is played. It'll also tell you in the uh, placement area that you're going to be putting the cats in specific areas, as well as the area are going to start in this little roost here. And then, of course, the Woodland Alliance, they actually got to pop up randomly throughout the board, and so will the uh, Vagabond as well. So they don't actually all start the same either. Uh, the beginning is going to be pretty simple. It, you're just going to follow each of these different little pathways here. Uh, the bird song, then the daylight phase in the evening. All three of them have it, but they all do different things during those phases. The bird song for the Marquise de Cat is going to be place one wood at each of your sawmills. And you have sawmills here, which are going to actually take and place wood there, which you can then use to craft uh, workshop stuff or buildings. Uh, these are your buildings over here. When you craft them, you're going to unlock certain things, whether it be certain uh, victory points, which are will be moved across this track here, or maybe it's going to be plus cards you'll be able to draw throughout the game as well. Uh, and this is okay, now the first thing you do at the daylight phase is you're going to craft using the workshops, uh, then take up to three actions, plus one per card that you spend, per one of these wild cards that you spend from your hand. There's battle, march, recruit, build, and overwork. Battling, simply roll the die to attack other players that are on your locations, and these are all the different locations. The ability to march is to take two moves to your units, you'll be able to move your units from one space to another, provided that you control that space is when you can move uh, to it. Um, and then you've got Recruit. Once per turn, you can place a warrior at each of your recruiters, and it'll show you on the board where your recruiters are. Uh, then you've got your uh, Build, which allow you to build certain things, and then Overwork. You can spend a card and place a wood at a sawmill in a matching clearing. And on the cards, it tells you. Everybody actually uses all the same cards in the deck, but they, uses the, they use the cards in different ways, and they're different for each player. The last thing is the Evening Phase, where you get to draw a card from the deck here, and plus one for each of these plus cards, which I showed you over here. There's going to be different things you're going to be getting, whether it's mainly victory points for the sawmills or uh, yeah, additional victory points here for the workshops, and then finally the extra cards and victory points for the recruiters, which will also allow you to craft different, uh, create more, recruit more units or uh, build more things. And then, yeah, they all have different things that you'll be doing when you build them. So it's kind of your choice as to why and when you want to build things with these specific Marquita cats. These guys over here are different. Uh, what they're going to do is, of course, they're going to let you draw, if your hand is empty, you draw a card. You can add one or two cards to the creed 
uh, to the decree, only one card may be a wild card, and it starts with two wilds and move and then build. This is where you're using your tableau for this specific people, for these, these people. And when you place a card down, you can go ahead and put it in one of the locations, and it'll allow you to move. So for instance, if you put this card here, it's going to be a free random movement, but you have to use every one of the actions. And if you don't use the action or you can't, you're going to suffer, suffer a penalty and lose points based on the wilds that are available in the tableau. And you're also going to go back down to your starting pool. So the farther you along you go in the game, the more different actions you're going to get and the more difficult it is going to be to basically uh, be able to perform all of those actions. So these are all the, you know, now he has, uh, he has to, he has to uh, recruit at a red space. He can move to any, any locations. They have to battle at one of these nice spaces. And then you have to build at a random location. If you cannot pro perform these actions, you're going to suffer. You'll uh, take some penalty at some point. Uh, these guys here, you're going to gain victory points as you move along this track here, which is going to be based on the cards you put down and uh, so on and so forth. So it tells you exactly how it works as well as you'll have a, uh, a leader of, uh, of a type that is going to do something for you. Uh, then you've got the Woodland Alliance guys over here. And these guys do a whole bunch of different things. They're going to involve spreading sympathy and revolting. You can, of course, craft, mobilize, and train. It works similar to this, but it's still different based on how it's going to function. You'll be placing down a lot more tokens and whatnot. And the Vagabond is even more different because it'll be using craftable items. And he kind of works against and with people. But it's a basic idea. The board over here uh, is going to have these little locations here, which are basically non-existent spaces except if a Vagabond is, in, is involved in the game, he can actually turn these things into something. But otherwise, depending on the number of players in the game, these are going to be there. And uh, it's going to have all your spaces and whatnot. And you're going to be moving around, and for these guys, they're going to be trying to build at certain locations, and you'll be getting more things. And for these guys here, they're just trying to spread out and place roosts in different areas as they start to control them. And it's important for each of the different classes to obtain their objectives and move across this board here. person who has the most points is going to be the winner at the end of the game and also to note as well like I said these these cards are all, are all used for every player but they're used differently however they have specific abilities this one here says an armor is it's in battle you can discard this to ignore all rolls taken on hits and what's gonna happen is one player will roll another player will roll and then you're going to compare the two, right? So, for instance, maybe this would be a better one if it was a one and a three. This would compare you. This would do three damage. This would do one damage. And then whoever would have the most would be in control of that specific area. And there's also some domination cards or dominance cards that if you have a certain amount of points, this one says if you have at least ten points or more, you can play this card, which will change your win condition in the game. You can win the game if you rule uh, three mouse clearings at the start of your bird song. So, and they have different ones that work with different, you know, that work uh, differently for each of the different factions anyway. But that's the basic idea of the game. You're trying to craft things, you're trying to gain control of an area, or try and cause revolts if you're playing this guy, or you're trying to uh, amass a large uh, amount of different cards here in this area and making sure you can perform all of the actions which will give you points throughout the game which is really really useful and of course the secret little vagabond over here and he has a whole bunch of different and unique interesting rules for him for specifically uh, that he's 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 a unique one all on his own but there's four different aspects of the game four different ways to play and every time you play it's going to be different based on uh, how you're moving around the board that's the basic idea of the game all right so let's come up and i'll explain the games uh what i think about the game and uh, the quality components and all that good stuff. Up we go. So that's the idea for Root. Now, this is a complex game because it has a lot of going for it based on the fact that all the different classes or characters do different things. And so if you want to learn how to play, I strongly suggest you go watch a walkthrough and it'll show you each of the different guys. But realistically, if you pick up this game, uh, you can go ahead and look at this learn to play thing and it will make it very easy for you. It's easy to explain one of the classes, but as you kind of try and explain all four of them, it gets a little complex and convoluted. And I wanted to pass all that up because it's something you could easily do on your own. Uh, you have these guys here. Now these are all going to be different and not only that but they're going to have a complexity range. The Marquis the Cat is the easiest and my personal favorite. Then of course the Eries are going to be a little more complex and like something like the Vagabond is very very complex based on how you want to play it. And they all have their own unique ways of getting victory points, but the victory track is the same for everybody, which is cool. And then of course the final ones are these little little nice guys. These guys are all trying to like, revolt, viva la revolution! And they're like popping up and causing sympathy in different regions and causing problems for all the different players. The cats are just trying to control everything and the Eerie try because they already do, and the Eerie are trying to spread out into different locations, but they are kind of, they're kind of, 
they kind of get messed up based on the fact that they can't control everything because their tableau gets too confusing after a certain period of time and, they, and everything goes crashing down on them. Um, but you have those options, right? And building is an interesting aspect as well, as well as changing the game's winning condition. There's a bunch of different cards that do different things for different battles. Battles are very easy to understand how they work and very simple as far as the rolling dice. That is probably the only aspect of luck in the game is the battles, but you can still do damage to your opponent regardless of if you win the battle or not. And uh, it plays an interesting role because while this game uh, has different aspects in it, for instance, I'm not a fan of playing, let's say, the, the, the mice, right? I don't really like playing these guys because the way they play is for me not as fun as something like the cats right but i have a friend named john who really enjoys playing something like the vagabond because it's a character you're gonna be able to control and do a lot of crazy things that are going to influence the game and then my wife is really interested in playing the eerie dynasties she likes playing as the bird faction and the fact that they go progressively more powerful but it then becomes a, a kind of strategic I want to say like almost like Sudoku puzzle as to how you want to move your turn and whatnot. You have to strategize all of this before you do it based on the cards you have in your hand, which is really interesting and puzzly, which I am terrible at, but I like. The cats are more easy for me. You just build a bunch of stuff, move them around. It's like Risk and you're battling. So it's almost like four games in one, really, but they all converge and they flow really nicely. This game is wonderfully drawn. It has great illustrations. The quality of the product's nice. All of the different characters are uni unique and awesome and interesting in their own way regardless of whether I like one or another everybody I've played with has liked something in the game and we've been able to make a game out of it because just because one of them is not a favorite for one player doesn't mean it's not for another player now I think the negative aspect to the game might be the fact that because there's so much going on, you're not going to know what everybody is doing the first couple games. So you know what you're doing after a while. It's pretty simple to learn one, but you have to understand what your opponents are doing. And usually it takes at least one play as playing with them or uh, playing as them. And then you're going to be able to understand how they function and how to counter them as best as you possibly can. You'll start to realize things like the uh, cats and the birds are often at odds with each other com combatively throughout the game, whereas the mouse is trying to stir things up and the vagabond is trying to manipulate the game in his own way, but not understanding how they all function together might be pretty complexing and mentally disorientating, as well as there could be analysis paralysis depending on the class you are playing. One's easier than another, so while I'm playing the cats, done, finished my turn, I knew exactly what I was doing. Then you get to, to the, the Eerie and they're like, okay, I have to pick a card to put down the tableau, and this is going to influence for the rest of the game until I get until I bust. So I have to make sure I pick the right one so that will influence the game directly in my benefit, and not every time it's gonna be a wild. And even if it was, once you bust, you're gonna lose points for all those wilds, so there's a cost to that as well. The unique addition of the different win conditions is excellent, and overall, it's really, really fun. Personally, I enjoy this game tremendously, and I strongly suggest you check this out. There's something in it for everybody and I think it's gonna be for the age group of it's probably gonna be uh, almost adults I would say for this specific game because there's so much complexities well even though still younger people can play it it's more than likely that you're going to enjoy this game with more hardened uh, strategic people uh, surprisingly enough considering that the game looks like it's gonna be a pretty simple uh, explanation to, uh, of how to, it's a pretty simple idea of how to play the game let me go ahead and flip this board over really quick with all these things still on it I should have pre-planned this and show you the back really quick Hopefully I didn't drop anything because this is interesting as well. This is the entire back of the board. And as you can see, it doesn't provide any of the different areas what they're gonna be located. You actually get to make your own type of thing. I think it has suggestions in the rule book as well. And uh, then you can play a unique, different version of the game, Root, which is really cool because I didn't need to add that. The game was awesome as it was without adding that. So that's just an extra little icing on the cake. Overall, strongly recommend this game. Excellent job, Letter Games, wonderful, Root.